I had several people reach out and ask, how do I build this thing? They wanted some kind of direction and how to do it. So what I went ahead and did is I went on uh, Fusion 360 and I went ahead and I made some STLs for you, some 3D printable files. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you some layout parts. It'll give you where to drill, what size to drill things in, a little bit of a template action going on for you. I also am going to show you in this video how to cut the metal. So we can see the tricks behind it. You can do it. You're always welcome to go get it done at a professional shop if you'd like. Use the STLs as a guide to where to put the holes in for the shop. And they'll take care of it for you. Other than that, you can do it at home and it's pretty simple. I'll go ahead and show you how now. This right here is our textured aluminum for the disc on the gravity flyer. This goes for your magnet disc and your upper disc. Here is the uh, code on it right here. I got this at Lowe's Hardware Store in the United States. So it's heavy texture on there. This one right here is a very light texture. I also got it at Lowe's Hardware Store and I included the uh, code on it as well. And I'm using this one for my center plate. You can also use regular flat aluminum if you'd like. One quick note, the heavy textured aluminum is mandatory for the upper and lower small discs. You can get it in smaller portions if you want, but it has to do with the amount of energy that's gonna be stored on it as we get going. So flat discs themselves will not work. So this is the one you want. Let's go ahead and work on the center plate here. As you can see, I have a stir stick here. I'm going to write this in a dark color right quick so you can see exactly what it is. Basically, I cut two holes in this. They're 8 inches apart. Our total disc is going to be 16 inches. So you can see we have a center point and we have an outside point. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our pencil and it's going to hold our center point in place. So here we go, we'll go ahead and take our marker now, we'll put it in the other hole, again we're going to force this all the way outside so that it stays tight the whole time, and there you go, look at a circle, try not to stop when you're making the circle, and there you go, pretty simple, you also want to make sure that your center point is marked when you're done. It's going to be a lot of things, uh, three little holes that are cut into this as well. So, right there, I think I had a little space on the end, so I want to make sure I got it right. By the way, just so you know, it's always better to build from the center hole than it is from the outside. It's just a lot easier. You see me marking it here. I do all my templates this way, that way the spacing works out a lot better. I try to do it from the outside, but depending on the way you cut it, it really could just be a terrible thing. Alright, let's move everything off here. We're going to go ahead and uh, get our tin snips. And all you got to do is follow the roundness of this thing. It's kind of awkward at the end, a little easier in the beginning. but. I'll let you watch and uh, we'll just cut to the outside on this just so you know if you want it accurate to 16 inches what you're going to want to do is cut to the inside I like cutting to the outside even if it's a little bigger only because uh, I, I give me a room to grind a little bit if I want to on the outside just to get it circular the way I want Just take your time when you're doing this. The worst thing you want to do is cut straight lines on it. You want to keep it going in a circular pattern. You never want to get it botched or, you know, if you have the thing at the wrong angle, you just want to move it before you cut it. Don't get in a hurry here. Trust me, it doesn't work out well. One thing also on this is uh, this is the lightly textured aluminum here, not the heavy textured aluminum. Again, on this plate, you can use completely flat aluminum with no texture on it whatsoever. 
I chose this one. I could have went with the flat, but I chose this one. Uh, it's really up to you on this. I've seen uh, Alexi's disc completely flat, so you can go ahead and use that one. We're using real thin gauge here. I think it's 1 16th of an inch or something like that. Really, really small. It might even be a 32nd. Uh, you can look at the tag on there. I don't remember what it was right offhand. One thing as well is try not to knock off any of the marker with your hand while you do this. You want to keep your fingers away from it as much as possible until you get all the cut done. And always leave the center marking there. Never, never try to wipe that off yet because you've got three holes that have to go in on this for the all threads to go through. There you can see the marker line right there. It wasn't tight at one point, so you see the marker going inward. Probably a good thing that I'm cutting on the outside here. Yeah, just watch out for binding on this. You can see it's starting to bind a little bit on me. It's just because the uh, the mass of the rest of it is, a, you know, kind of big and forcing against this little round shape you're trying to make. It just sucks. Let's just say it for what it is. It sucks. So, you're just going to have to get through it. And then, afterwards, the fun part, because then you got to clean up the line on the outside if it looks bad to you. Uh, I would generally wait and see if uh you know what what gets happens when you get it all done but uh i think you're pretty good uh with the cut as long as you do it right but that's just me and there you go we have a center disc it's just that easy okay now that we have our center disc there Again, we mark the center point in this, so we're just going to line up our center point here with our template. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us our outside holes here. There are a lot more holes in here. Uh, don't worry about those right now. Uh, they're for other things. So let's line up our center here. Make sure we're good. And then we're going to get our marker and we're going to mark the outside holes. So when you do this, do yourself a favor, put some pressure on this thing. Do not let it move. The more that it moves, the worse it's going to be. Also, make sure that when you're doing this marker, uh, you see I'm twisting it. It's because there's an edge on one side. So I want to make sure I fill up that whole hole with the marker and get it filled in. Uh, it just makes it easier. Again, keep pressure on it. Fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, but this is why you build the templates. All right, we're good to go. We got three holes. They match up to the same distance to, our, to the center point, so we're good to go. Now we got to put uh, holes in it. We got to make sure that we can put the all thread through there. So there's the all thread there. And it goes right in those holes just like that. I know some of you have done this before, so... Uh, you know, if you don't want to watch it, just get on to the build part. Just fast forward a little bit. But for those who haven't done this before, it's kind of what you have to do. Again, find a drill bit here. Just match it up with the uh, size of the all thread. You don't want this being too loose, but you don't want it to be super tight either. So just kind of match it up the best you can. And then make sure you don't ruin your table. So you're going to want to grab a uh, board and put that on your table real quick. There you go, you got your drill. Let's grab our board. There we go, put it to the edge right there so we know we're not going to hit our table. 
And a pretty straightforward process, guys, to drill a hole. You're going to see me going a little slower on this. I don't know if you noticed the end of my drill bit. It has a little extra piece at the end instead of being that V shape you normally see. But what it does is it squirrels around a little bit on the uh, part where you put it in. So you don't have to center punch it like you normally would and then drill it. On these you can kind of just wiggle a little bit and it'll go right into place. You see me set it in place and then as soon as you drill a little bit it'll be just off by a little. Reset it. Put it right through. There you go. Take your time. Go a little slower. You're good to go. And that's why I used that little board under there. God knows I ruined a lot of tables doing this. So, got smart after a while. Alright, so there we go. We got three holes in it. They're all equal distance apart. We're good to go, man. This centerpiece is done. Now we just got to clean it off. Now we're going to go ahead and clean the permanent marker off the outside edge and I just used isoprophic alcohol. You can use rubbing alcohol, it's the same thing. One thing I'll caution you against right here and you see me doing it, don't do this on your table right there, you'll leave a big mark, see? And there I go. Yeah, just making more work for myself apparently. Anyway, once you fix your mistakes, go ahead and take this thing to the edge of the table and just clean it there. Alright, now that we got that done, let's take a file here. Let's go ahead and make sure we get all the burrs off the edges, just so we don't cut ourselves. One thing I will tell you, if you don't do this step right here, you're going to get the grinder guy talking to you. I always think of him as a surfer dude in my head. It's like, hey man, make sure you use a grinder to clean up your work, man. Just something annoying. Yeah, living a little rent free in my head right there. But uh, that's okay. i clean it up for you. Yeah, just take your time and do this. Make sure you turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Just make sure you get all the burrs out of it. Trust me, you don't want to cut yourself later. I went ahead and marked these out already. We're looking at eight and a half inches here, so that basically four and a quarter is where you're going to make your mark here on your piece. And again, I'll leave an STL for that. So basically, we're ready to go. We got our center point. We got our four and a quarter right there. Put our pencil in again and mark it out with a marker. I went ahead and did it already here so we can just move ahead to the next step and all you got to do after this is just cut them out. As you see I cut them in manageable pieces here make it a little easier to do it but same rules apply as the first one just do your best and cut it as clean as possible. Now that our discs are cut out we're going to go ahead and take our template here again line the center point up there it is. Just do the best you can on this, guys. Again, if you wanted it accurate, cut on the inside of that line instead of the outside. I cut it on the outside. You can see my template doesn't exactly fit just right. But that's okay. We can have a little bit in there that's, that's off. But uh, it'll just give me some room on the end to grind it. And then I'm going to mark the outside here. This is just where the actual magnets are going to go. So that's another part, little hole in the template there. That way they are accurately done in the template. You don't have to go out and try to measure each one individually. And there you go, Nathan. Get a little smarter. Use the marker. All right, anyway, that's it. Once you get this, we're going to go on to the drilling process, so just make sure you get enough uh, ink on there so that you can see everything and you get it accurate to the center. Now that we have all our markings done, let's go ahead and drill it out. So, get your drill, get to the end of the table with the board. And there you go, just go ahead and drill it out. 
Take your time, do it steady, make it clean. Pretty simple. Don't let anything build up behind it either because it makes it hard to do this process. Start putting warps in your metal and everything else. Make sure you clear that debris. Alright, let's move on to the next thing. You can figure out the rest. Just get all the holes in there. Now that you got the disc all done and you got all the holes drilled in it for the magnets, it's time to do the center template. I'm going to go ahead and take a template. We got our uh, center part right here again. This is why we put them in there. Now all we're going to do is match up our little template here with the center part. This one's crucial, guys. This is the one that connects to your motor. So you want to make sure you check this with your uh, ruler here. Just get the same distance all the way around. As long as you get that, you're good to go. Do not get this part wrong because you will be out there grinding the ends of this thing every single time. So just take your time on this. Get it right. Once you do, again, let's mark the holes. All you're going to do is you're going to cut the holes on the outside here. The inside ones you don't have to worry about. We're just putting that little hockey puck thing you see down there that goes on here. It's four bolts that holds it in, top and bottom be the exact same way. Again, make sure it doesn't wiggle. If it wiggles, you you got to start over. Just go ahead and clean it off and start over because it, it will not work right. Again, put as much ink in there as you can and you're good to go. Then it's over to cut them out again uh, with your drill. This is the aluminum bar we're going to use right here. One eighth of an inch at, by one inch by three feet long. This should take care of the whole thing. We're also going to use a template here. Again, there's three holes in it. I will let you know on this one right here where I'm marking it out, the hole on the very left, I had to resize because it goes to the all thread. The two inner ones are the right size. On the template you'll get, they'll be actually correct. So all you got to do here, same process we're doing all day. Mark them. We're good to go. That's the length. To do that, those are where each of our screw holes are going to go. So we'll drill those out. And then that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and cut it just like that. Now that we got it all marked out, let's go ahead and cut it with our grinder. We got our cutting blade on. Again, you're just going to score it right here. And then once you get a good score line in there, you're going to go ahead and cut it off. Metal is going to get a little hot, so you got a few seconds to work with it before it does. Take your time, go slow, slow, cut it through, and do a good job. Afterwards, you're going to have to clean it up with the grinder or with the file again. You're going to need six of these total. So, once you get all those done, we'll move on to the next step. On this one here, you're going to want to clamp this one down. These uh, little parts get squirrely, so... Clamp it down, drill it out, and you're good to go. And then we're getting ready for assembly, so we're going to lay out all our parts. Here are all the parts here. We got our disc that we cut out right there. We got all the holes put in them in the proper places. All the center parts are done. We got our little tab here cut. We got our little hockey puck things here that we attach. We also have a top and bottom piece right here. One of them inside is uh, for your piezoelectric part right here. That's why you got that little pocket. See, it goes right in there. We're going to glue that in later when we do our electrical thing. And the one right here is just hollow. This is the bottom part, basically where all your wires mesh up in here. And it's just going to clean up some of the mess that you got going on. We got our motors here. These are the motor housings. On the uh, version you're going to get, they're going to be a little shorter. Those are a bit long. But the motor fits in there just fine. You see all that gap there? I went ahead and eliminated that. I didn't like it. Got the motors all the way to the edge, so they'll be shorter. Anyway, you got your motor. And you got your two pieces that connect to your motor right there. And... There you go, that'll go on there. Those will go on your little hockey pucks there. And then those go on to the uh, piece of metal just like this. 
you can pretty much see how it's going to build out. This is the all thread we'll be using, 5 16 by 18 by 1 foot. These all threads right here, let's go ahead and take a measurement on them, just so you know what you're looking for. Basically 12 inches long or 1 foot. Uh, there you go. Those are fairly easy. Again, we're going to use 3, not 4. Here's a bag of bolts right here. You can see that about three quarter inches long, and the width on them is just right around uh, one quarter of an inch. And there you go, there it is in uh, millimeters. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware. Again, they're all going to be five sixteenths hardware. I use lock nuts and washers. It's optional on the washers if you want to use them or not. You know, I might not use them on this one, but you might like to use them. Again, lock nuts. One key with lock nuts is if you want to put it upside down, thread it the right way, pull it off real quick, and then thread it backwards. Now let's get on to the assembly portion of this. Right now we're going to take our little hockey puck. We're going to take our little motor mount part here and we're going to go ahead and put them together. And this is kind of tedious, but you're going to have to do it. Small parts, big hands, don't work very well, but we're going to try to get it done. Now it just goes into the PLA here or the uh, plastic. You're welcome to go ahead and put in some inserts in here. Uh, I didn't know that everyone would uh, be able to buy the inserts in order to find them. Uh, relatively simple. These are M3 screws. So you just need an insert for an M3. And then take your soldering iron and go ahead and press them in. Uh, pretty easy process. But these right here, you just line them up. Again, I build this so that uh, everything lines up, guys. I don't like uh, errors in this where you have to mess with it. So... Hopefully your files will turn out real good. Every printer has a little bit of variance, but they all should be fairly accurate. Anyway, just put them in there as quick as you can. I'm an old man who can't do this. Got arthritis in my hand, so it takes a few minutes. All right, we're just going to get them all down there and then uh, in a snug fashion, then we're going to go ahead back and just lock them in place. It's kind of a long, boring process, guys, when you're building this stuff. It just takes time. Probably take you about, I don't know, a couple hours to put all this together and get it all done. So just make sure you put on some tunes and hang out while you do it. That's what I did. Yeah, it wears it out every time. I like the ones that have the rounded edges better than this one. That way you can get an angle on them. But uh, anyway, there we go. Let's lock this in. And it's pretty tight there in the PLA. I don't think you have to worry about it. Maybe after a little vibration and stuff on it, do the inserts if you think it's necessary. It's always a step you can come back to do, but this is fairly tight in there. Don't forget to put in those little screws right there. Yeah, I forget them all the time, so don't forget. Put those in there. Now let's put that to the side. Let's go ahead and work on our motor housing. Again, the final version will be about 20 millimeters shorter than this. But all the holes line up for the motors to go in there. Again, we left a little vent holes in there. So, yeah, drop it in there. Fits in there pretty good. Line up the two holes. And 
Yeah, all these all these small parts are bad for my health. Yeah, hard to put them in there, man. Anyway, just get it in there. On these right here, remember, uh, you're putting it into plastic, so don't go super tight. Just get it really snug in there where it's not going to back out on you. All right, done deal. That's in there now. Now that we're done with the uh, motor and we're done with the hockey puck, let's go ahead and we're going to put this into the hockey puck part right here. Again, same thing, just line them up, put them in. So, this is just fairly simple. It just takes a few minutes. It's tedious, it's boring. One thing I would suggest you do when you drill these out on the uh, actual metal plate, you'll see mine are elongated on the outside edges. That way I can loosen them and go back and maneuver them a little bit in case I have something that's uh, uneven on the outside. That way I don't have to grind everything out there. It just makes it a little easier, makes it easier to put these in. Again, I like to be accurate, but this is the one thing I found that sucks every time. I hate using the grinder on it because you got to make a whole entire jig for the grinder to do it. And uh, it's just not worth my time. So, there you go. Put them in there. Same thing. PLA holds it. You want to put inserts in here. Go ahead. I don't think it needs it. But, there we go. We're just going to tighten this one up. Again, snug on here is good. Do not try to overpower this. You're just going into plastic. You'll just tear it up and have to build a new part. All right, that's just about done. Now we got to combine the uh, motor with the bottom piece here. Now what you're going to look for is that little flat spot on your uh, motor shaft. Get your small little allen wrench and line it right up there with that screw. So there it is, there's that flat part on your motor shaft right there. You can see it. Now this one right here, this isn't necessarily snug, you're going to tighten this one in. So usually you'll see a little flex in your uh, your allen wrench there when you do it that's a sign that's in there tight this is one you do not want to have loose it always messes you up so I usually put this as close down as I can just leave a little bit of room in there just like that sorry for it's hard to be seen in there guys I got big hands so just kind of have to deal with it there we go tighten it up real good yeah you go get a little flex on there go to the other side make sure you tighten that one There we go, good and tight, it's on there, there you go, nice and good, spinning good. Basically we're going to do this top and bottom the exact same way. Just make sure uh, when you do this you get your orientation of your magnets right. Alright, now we're on to final assembly. Again on the outside part I drilled it out just a little bit more so that it fits on that all thread and then I would show you how I put the shafts in, but it involved a lot of cussing and a lot of time. And by the time I went to edit it, there was nothing much left of the voiceover. So uh, I went ahead and skipped that part. You guys can figure it out. Anyway, it's just a long, boring, annoying process is what it is to put those all threads in there. Especially when you're using lock nuts. So, anyway, put those in there loosely. Again, we got two holes on this. We're just going to do the outside hole first. Makes it real simple. Try to leave everything loose until you get all the bolts in there. That way you don't have to uh, loosen it back up to put something in. Just a heads up on that. Again, this is going to be top and bottom the exact same way. I just did the bottom one already. Uh, there's no real difference in there. The only thing difference is you're going to have to put in the magnets and That's pretty straightforward on how to do that. So I didn't even bother to videotape that part 
So once those are in, we'll go ahead and uh, grab our little piezo piece. Now again, I'm going to wait until I do the electrical portion of this. But just for the build sake, I'm going to go ahead and put this together for you so you can see it. But I'm going to take mine back apart and go ahead and glue that in because it usually takes overnight. So I don't have it ready right now. But I wanted to show you how all the pieces fit together. So we'll just put these bolts in right here. And you can see this thing gets fairly sturdy with the double bolts here. I actually like a lot better than just one bolt and then it's spaced out. I like these all locking together like this. Makes it a real sturdy process when you go ahead and do this. Uh, the other way, it kind of moves left and right and looks just bad. So this way everything's nice, tight, and everything lines up right in a row. So there's no issues there. So... Anyway, that's how it's done. You just got to tighten it down now. And uh, I won't show you that. It's fairly boring. When you're all done putting it together, it should look like this. Let's talk a little spacing real quick. From the center plate itself to the bottom of the flat bar right there, uh, you're looking at four inches on the top. And on the bottom, we're looking for five and one quarter. And now you have your own gravity flyer. It'll take me a couple days to get the STLs out. So if you don't see them right away, just check back later. And I'll, I'll have them in the description for you. But you can see the top portion here looks real nice and clean. It's all real sturdy on this one. The bottom part looks nice and clean. And the next time I do a video on uh, this particular thing right here, we'll go ahead and do the wiring. But this is just how to build the uh, gravity flyer itself. Anyway, if you like what you saw here today, please like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Thank you for watching today, and hopefully it helped you out.